Hey, this is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. And if you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, Dennis Giannoutsis. He's prepared to ignite. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. There's this burning question I have in me, which is around storytelling. Why the, the importance of storytelling? Should leaders be talking about stories? Should they be using storytelling to help get their messages across? And why? The answer to that is yes, definitely. Right. definitely. So storytelling, again, when we think of storytelling for a lot of us, we think of this kind of epic adventures, rags to riches, a story, start of a story, a, hero, a, a, a hero's journey, and then at the end of the day, it's all wow. And try to just put that to, to, to the side and think of storytelling as simply moments of emotion plus a lesson. So moments of emotion plus a lesson, right? Because stories, that's all what the stories are. It, it's, it's moments of emo emotions that we've all felt and can all relate to, right? We think about gossip, right? Two people. My ex-wife and your, are you, are you married? You're married. Okay. You're imagine you're, well, I don't have to imagine that, but two, two women coming, it doesn't have to be two women, anybody, friends coming together for a coffee, telling each other a story, stuff that has happened over the last week or so, some juicy stuff, some not so juicy stuff, bits and pieces. That's all storytelling, right? Cause it's the intrigue that we have as humans to know, to, to listen to emotions, moments of emotion and what they mean, right? So it's happening all the time. Storytelling happens in celebrity magazines that somebody has just maybe a celebrity that is now divorcing or a celebrity is now pregnant. Who cares, right? But the people do care because it's emotion. All these emotions, like all emotions that all adults feel, we can relate to, right? We can all relate to, 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 to those emotions because most of us, nearly all of us have, have gone through emotions, right? So fear rejection, excitement, joy, sadness, all the, all the others as well, right? Yeah. So when we talk about those things, we can straight away imagine what it feels like to be there or feels to experience that. And then at the end of it, a, less, a lesson, some kind of a lesson, some kind of, okay, what does this mean? So that essentially is what storytelling is. And so if we can use that more, people can listen to us more as well. So it's, again. I said earlier on, unpredictability is good. A story usually is unpredictable. You don't know where it's going. So I can tell you, okay, let me explain to you a little bit about what happened yesterday, right? So I, I started the day at, at like this. I went downstairs. So again, I can continue with that, but you don't know where that's going. No. You don't know. And, and you think it's the truth. We automatically, we, we don't know, okay, loads of fake news, loads of manipulation, naturally, that's happening in the world, in the media, we know that, right? But generally, when we, when we start telling a story of, of what's happened to us or somebody else or, or the future, something in the future, vision story, let's say, we, we believe it, yeah? And that's a good thing, we believe it. So again, in terms of sharing messages, in terms of, let's say, sales as well, when we're talking about um, how good something is or how great something is, as soon as you start to feel that this is scripted, that this is, I've said it a million times before, what's coming again, it's predictable. I'm, you're just one in a million. You're just not a one in a million. You're actually one, a person that I've spoken to about this, that is just like all the others. You're not different than anybody else. You're going to feel, actually, this, this feels salesy and I don't, want to, I don't want to continue this conversation. But if I, let's say I started to, to share a little bit about what happened to, to, a, to a client of mine, just like similar to you. And I start explaining and I, I start explaining about that success story, how they came to us, how we met, what they were looking for, the challenges they had, and then how I stepped in and, and helped them with this and this. And then not the moral of the story, but at the end of the day, they're now happy, more confident and sharing their messages and getting more business. So you don't feel 
threatened, but you certainly don't feel like, okay, this is salesy. So at, at stories, you can throw them in literally pretty much anywhere along that scale to get people's attention. So stories are, are really helpful with that. Again, you can tell a story about something that's happened to a friend, let's say. You tell it to me, there's a moral or there's a lesson. If it's a really good one, tomorrow I can tell a friend of mine, I can say, listen, I was on this podcast last night and uh, a guy called Dennis, and he told me about this guy and blah, 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 blah. I won't say exactly the same words as you with exactly the same tone and exactly the same phrases, but the moral, the lesson, I'll share that, right? Mm -hmm. The same mm -hmm. thing. So stories mm -hmm. are really viral, right? They're really easy to pass on, right? So as a leader with stories, with experiences, as a company with people in that company who have many different experiences, many different clients, let's say, many different success stories, it's always a good idea to come together now and again and, and, and almost share those stories internally so that you've got all these small little, and they, again, they don't have to be big things or big mm. adventures. They can just simply be things that you, they've seen or experienced or heard or, or something happened to them that made them think about this, which is relevant, which is a message which we can all take right? A client that's been, that was, had a few challenges at the beginning, but at the end of the day, you worked with them closely to get through those challenges and those issues. And at the end of the day, you, they're happy clients, right? And mm. you're still with them, mm. right? Mm. So stories are, again, moments of emotion with a, with a lesson that can help us all. People who work for us, potential clients who have already worked with us, and it can, it can do many things. It could build the brand, it could build their credibility with you. And it also really helps connections. So again, I, I can start with a story. Not a st I, can't, I don't have to say this is a story. Because again, no. if I say, let me tell you a story. Again, your brain actually goes the other way and starts to think of when you were a kid, maybe when, when we were a kid, let me tell you a story. When it's a, well, let me tell you a story. You think of a storybook and you think of a fable and you think of, okay, this is la la land. This isn't actually real, right? So get, always get away from saying, let me tell you a story or here's a story about, right? Just go straight into it. So I can tell you, I can start telling you a story about something that's happened to me or, or my background or whatever it is. When I do that, you as a listener, again, if we don't know each other, you're more inclined to then open up and share your story, right? So what, what am I saying here? The more we kind of share stories, we kind of share stories to get stories. And when we do that, and when that exchange starts to happen more frequently, what happens? Connection happens stronger. There's a stronger mm -hmm. connection, right? Yep. So uh, essentially stories can help in many ways to strengthen that connection, to strength, strengthen the credibility of who you are, your company, and also the services and the value you're providing. So really, yeah, stories are really essential. And often we don't realize, don't always realize that the power of what they can do. Oh, awesome. Listeners, you could be actually listening to this podcast, whether this episode with, with myself, with Peter, or other episodes I've got. And you can utilize and say to people, I, I heard this on an episode of the day on this podcast I was listening to. And you can use those kind of stories as well. Peter, that's so powerful about storytelling. And I love it. Moments of an emotion, moments of emotion and the lesson. It's the lesson as well that's really quite key to actually bring it home for people, for them to actually understand and make it relevant for them. Now, Peter, just a final question I want to ask you. The, the, the show here is called Leadership is Changing. When I say that title of the show or that statement, what does that mean for you? Yeah, leadership is changing. For me, because of the work I do and because I'm a lot of the time here looking through this screen, working with leaders, helping them connect more. They have, they, it is changing. It's still changing. It changed dramatically. Naturally, something came up 22 years ago. We all know what, right? So helping leaders really connect better here. And again, it's the same thing offline in the real, I say the real world in person, right? The, the skills that we have or had these competencies, these communication competencies, right? All well and good. But when it comes to here, when it comes to this, that doesn't mean you can just transfer this, exactly the same things to this environment because a lot of the time it doesn't work. One example is with sales leaders, right? So something that I've seen often 
and, and, and it comes up all the time with the sales teams that I work with, right? So in person, sales teams, sales professionals, really good. They know what they're doing. They've done it for years. They, they're striving. They have their ups and downs, but they're pretty good. And they consider themselves great, good sales professionals, right? Cause they've got the skills and they've got the, they've got the know-how. They know those little things, all the little kind of tricks and the little strategies and the techniques, and that's all well and good. And that's cool. Right. But when it comes to here, so many doing exactly the same thing, what they do in person, they do it here and they're finding there's something missing. It's not working. It's not working as well, right? They're not getting as many on those discovery calls. They're not getting as many kind of next conversations down the line or something that, 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 that trust, that credibility isn't as, they don't get it as quick perhaps as they would do it as they would do um, in person. Mm. And it's the other way as well. How other people, some people maybe in person were not great at particularly great at, at selling in person. But when it comes to here, because maybe they're focused, they're really aware of how they're showing up. They're really thinking about things like intention, connection, curiosity, right? They're, ma they're, they're managing to connect better. So the connectors, we can say, if you're a good connector here, that opens up more possibilities to be stronger in whatever competency you, you, you have, right? So a stronger connector here, we're seeing sort of new, almost like new sales styles, right? Mm. New heroes in the sales industry because they they know what, they understand that here, it's the, that those other skills are really important, that connection, really showing you're curious, really trying to listen, listening to, listening through the screen is not easy, right? But you can do it by showing you can do it by showing certain signals. Again, people can't see this. You can see this, Dennis, right? So I, to tell me the kind of things that you've noticed that show you that I'm curious and I'm listening, really listening to you. What have you noticed and share with the listeners? You're almost leaning into the screen is one thing. The other thing I'm noticing is that your eyes, but also the way that you're looking at me, it's like you're in, with intent to, to know what's going on and listening to me. But then the other one is you will clarify what I've actually said as well. And, yeah. and the nodding, of course, as well, which is really helping. And I think all of that as a combination brings it together nicely for me that I know that you're with me, as I'm saying. You got it. That's it. I want you, I want you to be 100% clear of my, of what I'm feeling or, or, or what I want you to feel, right? So I can, I can do many things again with these nonverbals, my, my nodding, I can do that. I can do this so you can see, so you see this right now, Danny. So I've got my, I've got my finger on my chin and I'm thinking, so it's showing you that I'm like considering something, even like folding my arms like this is a, is an indication that I'm thinking about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about this. I'm curious to know what you think, right? But I'm slightly, my head is slightly to the side, which again, gives us the impression that I'm, I'm listening more to you because my ear, I, I, over to the side, it's just one of those indications that gives you the impression that I'm listening to what you have to say. So yeah, all Absolutely. of these things are really important. So people that are showing these or are aware of these, at least first thing is being aware of them and then you work on them. And we, because we could thing about zoom is well, zoom, any kind of virtual exchange, because we're doing them all the time. It's one th it's a, it's something that we do constantly every day. So why not say to ourselves, I'm going to get really good at this. I can hmm. practice this every day. Yeah. I can practice yeah. this every day. So small things you do and you get good at them and you can see, you, you can see and hear and feel if they're working, you can see, feel from the other person, whether these things are actually working or not. So the more you do them, the more you get good at them. So again, it's all about helping these leaders, sales leaders, marketing, whatever department they, they're in, or, or even the CEOs to really be aware and connect more with and, and feel comfortable and making others feel comfortable. Now, a lot of people, whether they're being entrepreneurs and large corporates, whatever, that we get influenced by various leaders in our lives. And now this person can be alive or from history. Who is your favorite leader and why? Sarah Blakely is my favorite leader. So Sarah Blakely is the founder of Spanx, which are the shapewear, the original shapewear for women. And the reason that I really like Sarah is because she has been a very authentic leader. So first, she founded a huge, very profitable organization, and she started it out of her house. And so she started with very humble beginnings, and then she was able to build her company up 
to the point where in October of 2021, she sold the majority share of her organization. And I think it was over, I think it was like 1.2 billion is what she sold it for, which is obviously a huge amount. But part of what I really respect about her is her authenticity. And just even watching her on her Instagram page with like her four kids, like her kids will often look like she hasn't like bathed them or groomed them in months and years. And here she is like super successful and she's just really willing to be honest. The other thing that I just really respect about her is her ability to nurture her staff and the people that help her get where she is. So when she sold the company, she gave her employees each $10,000 and two plane tickets, round trip plane tickets to anywhere in the world. And I just thought that was such a neat testament to her desire to help give back to people who had really helped make her who she was. And so for those really reasons, I really admire her. Awesome. Ah, really good. And if you were to sit on a park bench with Sarah, having a cup of coffee together, what would be one question you would ask her? So I would ask her if she felt like there was a turning point between when her business was small and when she was able to scale it. To be transparent, while my business currently is very successful and doing more than most female entrepreneur businesses do in terms of revenue, I'm very proud of that. I still feel that there is a big gap between smaller kind of more mom and pop businesses to larger corporations and making that transition is really difficult. Like we were talking about going from just one employee to several employees, or as you grow, there are different challenges that you face. And I would love to talk to her about how she was able to navigate that. Great. Now, congratulations to you on your, what you're talking about, your revenue and going really well in that. What, what drives you in your business? It drives me to be constantly learning and growing. I really believe that I'm not the type of person who wants to sit still. I always want to be pushing myself to do something that's just outside of my kind of my comfort zone and to really give myself that challenge to see where I can go. And I know that I can accomplish a lot, but oftentimes I've had, I had a coach tell me once that I needed to dream a bigger dream. And that's something that I always think about. And for a long time, I had that posted on my wall, like dream a bigger dream. So what is it? Oftentimes we play small, especially I think as a female founder, it's easy to feel like we're limited. Maybe we have responsibilities to take care of our children or a household, and we feel limited in our capacity to grow. So really just trying to push myself beyond what I think I can accomplish. Yeah, it's quite interesting that you say that because I find that I've coached a lot of female leaders around the world, and there seems to be that common theme sometimes coming through around them actually dreaming bigger or actually thinking bigger or actually going out and doing things because when they do it way better than anyone else. And it's really amazing to see it. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And I, I just find that I just wish they would do more like that. And I think a lot of it is that to encourage them to do it. But I also find it's actually quite interesting how that same kind of mindset or that same kind of thing happens for people, whether than being male or female, living in a smaller country than others. And mm. they talk about that and they talk about, and I hear men and women in New Zealand, as an example, talking about, oh, little old me and little old New Zealand. I'm like, no, that thinking needs to change because when we, when Kiwis go out there on into the global stage, we punch about above our weight. We do really well. And I think that it's about a mindset about how we think possibly differently to then actually go out there and do things. And I think that's really cool what you've shared there because, yeah, dream a bigger dream. I think that, that's awesome. Yeah, nice way of putting it. Thanks. The show here is called Leadership is Changing. And when I say that title or that statement, what does that mean for you? I definitely think that leadership is changing. I think back to my early years in my career and the way that I was perhaps coached or mentored. And then I look at our world today and it is so much different than it was at the early stages of my career. And so for sure, leadership is changing. And I think that it has so much to do with the fragmentation of our world. We have become so fragmented and really the way that we approach things is so much different, right? If you were thinking about a very contained structure in the past, it was easy to say, oh, this one person was at the top. 
And there were, there were, and there still are, of course, a handful of corporations that far exceed revenues than other organizations, but there is so much more opportunity now. And I think that because of all of that fragmentation, it changes the way that we approach leadership. Mm -hmm. Did you see when we were going through the last couple of years of pandemic and that, did you see organizations or leaders, some step up and others who didn't have the title of manager or, or leader step up and then others who are leaders and managers that didn't step up. Did you see that kind of scenario? Yeah, I definitely did. And obviously, I think that there is like the whole, the large resignation yeah. where so many people quit their jobs. And I do think that part of that resignation was individuals coming to terms with whether they really wanted to be in this role anymore, right? And I think when we when it comes to leaders, you've got a, f a few different camps of people, right? You had the leaders who are very used to institutional leadership, the way that we maybe thought about it 10 or 20 years ago. And I think there's a level of discomfort in how is this changing, right? If I approached leadership in this standard way, and now all of a sudden that doesn't work, perhaps they didn't want to move forward with that. And then you have people who maybe were in leadership positions and had that adaptability and they were able to really make the changes to see how their employees needed or their teams needed to be treated and respond well to them. And then I think you've obviously got this up and coming group of leaders who maybe not only are setting the narrative, but are willing to step up and become leaders themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 